Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me. Today we're going to make eggplant stacks. So we'll be using one eggplant. Um, the eggplant has been washed and dried with the green top cut off. I suggest at this point, before using your mandolin, you cut the eggplant in half. Um, I didn't try that initially and there was somewhat of a struggle. So after I cut it in half, um, I decided to test the mandolin to see what the perfect thickness was and it's about one quarter of an inch you can get about six pieces from each mandolin I mean from each eggplant half if you slice it um, about a quarter of an inch and um, make sure you use that protector um, you don't want to cut yourself that mandolin it's very sharp so I got about 12 slices, uh, makes about a dozen. Uh, the first three slices were too thin. So right now I'm just placing the eggplant on a wire rack because we'll be salting the eggplants to help remove some of the bitterness out of the eggplant. So I'm just going to use regular sea salt and you lightly sprinkle the eggplant with the salt and then you can press the salt down into the eggplant so um, it gets in there and it doesn't fall off because you will be flipping these over to salt the other side so right now I'm just pressing the salt into the slices flip each slice over and lightly sprinkle the salt on the other side after you salt the other side, you want to let these rest for about 45 minutes. So this should be the first step in your cooking process because uh, the pulling the liquid all out of the eggplant using the salt, it takes about four, a good 45 minutes. So you just sit these to the side and then 45 minutes later, You'll have um, liquid formed on the top of the eggplant. And at this point, you can rinse if you like. Lightly rinse with water, then pat dry. I just rinse mine off because I don't want to add any additional liquid to the eggplant. Um, but you can rinse the extra salt off if you like, if you have a salt sensitivity. Or if you have high blood pressure, um, the next time I make these, I will try with the no salt brand and see if it gets a sweat out of these. If it does, then that's a win-win situation, most definitely. I'll let you guys know how that works out. Follow me on my Instagram page, Trill Vicky, where I will post photos of the food that I make daily so you can see if you want to you know check the video out to go along with the post so now we have the eggplants they're all dried off and we're going to go to the wet dry batter so for the wet batter i'm using one cup of garbanzo bean garbanzo bean flour that i grind up in my um Nutribullet. I'll post that video so you can see how simple it is to make your own flour out of garbanzo beans. So this is two half cups that I'm just leveling off. And then I'm using about three-fourth cups of water. Um, so you just have to gauge the um, consistency of the batter once you start adding the water it should be the consistency of a good pancake batter because you're actually going to dip the eggplants in this mixture this is an egg free mixture so um, you want it to be nice and thick so it will give the breadcrumbs something to hold on to so after you get it to the consistency that you want, you can either season it with some Italian seasoning, a little bit more garlic powder, a little bit more onion powder, 
or uh, whatever seasoning you want to put in at this point. I didn't add any additional salt because the eggplants have been well salted and the breadcrumbs um I believe the breadcrumbs have a little salt in those as well. If you uh get the store prepackaged panko breadcrumbs, um I didn't add any seasoning other than the nutritional yeast that I added to the panko breadcrumbs, which you'll see in a minute. And a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder to the dry portion but the only thing that I will add to the wet batter is about a half a tablespoon of Italian seasoning that's just to give it a little extra oomph so right now I'm just getting it to the consistency I want uh, garbanzo bean flour is a little bit more dense than regular whole wheat flour and, you know, like I said, I made this myself in my, uh, using my Nutribullet. So, you just have to gauge how, uh, what the consistency of the batter should be just from your own experience. But if I have to guess, I would say it was about a cup of garbanzo bean flour and almost a cup of water. And now um, I've just added the Italian seasoning. So we're going to stir that. And now I have the, the dry batter or the dry dip, which will be maybe about a cup of panko crumbs. I think I used almost half of that container. Um, a, a tablespoon of onion powder and a tablespoon of garlic powder now you may want to start off with a half a tablespoon of each seasoning if that sounds like too much for you and then i added four i'm sorry then i added um some nutritional yeast so i added about How many? That was a half a tablespoon, I believe. So I added four half a tablespoons, which are, is actually two tablespoons. So I added two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And now I'm just mixing it up getting the dry batter all mixed up so we can then dip the eggplants in this dry batter so you're going to drip dip it in the wet batter first and then coat it with the dry bread crumbs and we're not going to fry these we are going to bake these in the oven so you want to preheat your oven to 400 so for the cookie sheet, you want to pour about a table of oil, tablespoon of oil on the cookie sheet and then um, spread it around with the brush um, because we're going to roast these in the oven and we don't want the breadcrumbs to, st to stick. So the eggplant should roast for about... 30 to 40 minutes you just want to check it after about 15 minutes and then flip your eggplants over so the other side can get a nice crispy crust all right so just dip a slice of the eggplant into the wet batter first then let some of that roll off then dip it in the dry batter and just keep going till you get all 12 slices covered up. And like I said, we will be roasting these in the oven. So make sure your oven is preheating or preheated to 450 degrees once you start um, 
actually preparing the the eggplant after you've sawed it and they sweat it and you dried them off. Because when we pop these bad boys into the oven, we want the oven to be nice and hot so they can immediately start cooking. Now, I also suggest that you, if you want, if you want them to be even more crispy, you can add a about a tablespoon of oil to your breadcrumb mixture. Or you can add a tablespoon of oil to the wet batter. So then when they go into the hot oven, you'll really get a good crispy fry. This is the lower fat version. But you very, uh, very much can put a tablespoon of oil in your wet batter. And that's just going to help with the um, the wet batter crisping up even more in the oven. So now we're just, uh, you know, continuing to bread all of the pieces. And like I said, you will get, if you cut the slices to the correct thickness, about a quarter of an inch, you can get about 12 slices out of one eggplant. That is four servings with three pieces of eggplant per stack. And so that's a pretty good deal, you know, um, considering you, you may have some pasta, like I'll show you later. I'll be having pasta and fried oyster mushrooms with, with my stacks. But um, you very well could eat this whole thing. I mean, for pennies on the dollar, really, for what you're paying for the eggplant. Um, I got that package of eggplant for a dollar. Um, this made four servings, and um, it was great. So um, from an economical standpoint... This is a very cost-friendly recipe, and it's not fried. It doesn't have any egg, and you can control the amount of fat and sodium in this recipe. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, you can add oil, a tablespoon of oil, to the wet batter if you prefer and it would just help with the uh, roasting of the uh, eggplant pieces in the oven. So you want to roast these on 450 for about 15 minutes. Then uh, take it out, flip it over, and put it back in for about another 15 minutes. Just so each side is nice and crispy. So it can hold up well to the sauce that we'll be putting on later. And so um, you get all the pieces nice and coated up. And now they're ready to pop in the oven. And like I said, you um, can put pop them in the oven. But before you do, we're going to top them off with a little bit of uh, plant-based butter. So I'm just doing this. Now, if you like, if you have some oil, some spray oil, you can most definitely... Um, Spray these, spray this top part with oil to help with the um, crisping up and the browning. I'm trying some plant based butter with this just to see how it works out. Um, it's not as stiff as regular butter, so you know it's kind of a little kind of a struggle for me to get this on, but I just wanted um, a little bit of extra flavor on the top since this is my weekend decadence meal but this is a totally plant-based recipe you can swap out whatever you like if you're not truly vegan or if you know you have these other ingredients at hand you have 
regular butter you have the eggplant you have maybe some regular mozzarella cheese and you just want to try this out before going vegan vegan then do that you know i don't encourage anyone to throw away any food you know um so if you don't want to use the vegan products use what you have in your refrigerator just make this recipe because it's yummy so now i'm putting those in the oven and i'm just now i got some almond based plant-based cheese that i wanted to try out i've never tried it before so it said mozzarella like i believe so now i'm just gonna open the package and slice this up because we'll be putting this on top of the eggplants and then layering a piece of eggplant sauce cheese eggplant sauce cheese eggplant sauce cheese and then pop those into that 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, you could try your broiler you just have to really watch watch it after you put it in the oven on broil because basically at this point once we create the stacks then you know the eggplant is already done and you don't really want to burn it or overcook it so um, it's up to you whether you want to put it back in the 400 degree oven you could probably even turn your oven up to 425 because at this point you're just trying to get the cheese to melt now I didn't use a lot of sauce when I actually stacked the eggplant but again you can put however much sauce you want on here this is my first time using the cheese So we'll see how this melts all right so now we have the eggplants um, they've cooked in the oven and um, I actually flipped them over so you can see that um, they're nice and browned on both sides and so now we're going to make the stacks and um, they didn't stick to the pan at all so remember oiling your pan is crucial to prevent sticking and you want your oven to be really hot when you put the eggplant in so then they can immediately start cooking so that is just some bottled spaghetti sauce that i purchased at the store I like the garden vegetable prego so you want to put a little bit of the sauce in the bottom of the dish now I probably could have just used that cookie sheet again just by putting the sauce on the bottom just to keep uh, you know dirty dishes down so put a piece of eggplant on the sauce now I'm putting a couple of pieces or one piece of cheese on the bottom now I'm going to add a little more sauce to help facilitate the melting of the cheese because the sauce is hot. I had it heating up on the stove and I'm not adding that much because it's my first time making it but so I wasn't really sure I probably could have spread that sauce out over the cheese to really help with the melting so that might be something that you want to do when you make this recipe so now i'm putting two pieces of cheese i'm trying to put it close to the outside because i want the cheese to kind of melt down the sides of the eggplant stack while it's in the oven so um now I'm going to add a little bit more sauce to the top. I 
and again you know if you want to spread the the sauce out on the cheese because it is hot um, to help with facilitate the melting while it's in the oven you can most definitely do that add a little bit more sauce one more piece of cheese and then you can sprinkle with dried parsley and let it cook in the oven until the cheese is nice and melted and then after you uh, take them out the oven you want to serve while they're hot and so I paired this with a green spaghetti that had or green pasta spaghetti that had spinach in it and a fried oyster mushroom that I made and I'll be posting uh, that fried oyster mushroom in a few days so now we're just going to sprinkle these with a little bit of parsley pop these girls in the oven for about 20 minutes on 400 and or you can use the broiler you just want to watch watch it because they can burn or another alternative is depending on how deep your air fryer is you can put them in the air fryer so I apologize I don't know what happened to the portion of the video where I actually took those out the oven but now I've plated these with my